This is 3.4, page 6. I'm going to start talking about vertical motion. Uh, before we get started on this, if you are currently enrolled in physics, um, you cannot use the previously learned physics formulas. You need to use calculus to answer these problems using derivatives and, and the techniques that we're covering here. Okay, for vertical motion, we're just talking about simple vertical motion, straight up and down. Just like um, rectilinear motion was directly on a horizontal line back and forth, the vertical motion we're talking about, straight up and down, vertical. No variations of that. So examples would be dropping a ball out of a window, throwing a rock up in the air, it would be straight up in the air, it would go straight up and come straight down. We're going to use this format for our position function. So S is going to be the height at time t. So that's what we'll be looking for now is the height, not the position on the number line, but rather the height. Um, acceleration, um, A equals acceleration due to gravity. And there's two values we'd use. Um, one is negative 9.8 meters per second squared um, metric and uh, English units, negative 32 feet per second squared. Now a lot of times that's what we're going to use in here, so you need to pay attention to what units of measure are given in the problem. If it's feet in the problem, then obviously we need to use this one. If it's meters, you can use that one. Just be sure to pay attention to what it is. V sub 0 is the initial velocity. Uh, S sub 0 is the initial position, or initial height in this case. Okay, um, so we'll look, take a look at the first problem. A ball is thrown off a building that's 432 feet tall. Uh, write the equation of the height of the ball, um, ball as a function of time. Instead of thrown off a building, let's just talk about this being dropped. So it's dropped. It just let go of the ball. It has no speed to it other than the immediate pull of gravity. Um, so if we just sketch that out, um, say the top of the building here is 432 feet. We're basically going to take that ball and just drop it from that. Um, down here at the ground, we have zero feet. Um, and from the problem, since it's dropped off the building, the initial velocity is zero. Uh, the initial height is 432 feet. So let's put together the formula. We're going to use this. So we have S equals one half. Since our units of measure in feet, we're going to use acceleration due to gravity of negative 32. Um, the t values remain in this function, t squared, plus initial velocity is 0 times t, plus initial height, 432. Okay, so we'll clean this up. Uh, 1 half times negative 32, negative 16 t squared. 0t just goes to 0, plus 432. There is my position formula for this problem. Okay, find the instantaneous velocity at 1 and 3 seconds. So we should remember that velocity is equal to the derivative of height in this case, or position. It's the rate of change of height in this problem. Um, so We'll just take the derivative of this, so we get minus 32t, and there's, that becomes 0, so the velocity is just simply minus 32t. They want uh, the velocity at 1 second and 3 seconds, so we just simply plug that in. So velocity at 1 second equals negative 32 times 1, or negative 32 feet per second. Always include your units. Velocity at 3 seconds is negative 32 times 3, or negative 96 feet per second. They're negative because the ball is, be, is headed downward. Uh, down is negative. 
and it's speeding up because of the force of acceleration due to gravity. Okay, how long does it take for the ball to hit the ground? So you have to think about what conditions exist at the ground level. Well, that is the position or the height equals zero. So I can take my um, position function and set it equal to zero. So I have minus, that's from part A, I just use this, minus 16t squared plus 432 equals zero when it hits the ground. So that gives me 16t squared equals 432. t squared equals 27. So t equals square root of 27. I don't really need to worry about the plus or minus here because there's no negative time. And if you put that in your calculator, you get about 5.196 seconds. Okay, on the next page, we're going to continue with this problem.